They were blown out last year in the ACC championship. Carolina uncharacteristically uh, not a great free throw shooting team this year. They have gotten better during the season and their team average up over 70 percent. But they are not like the Carolina teams of old and well, Montrose misses both. Even when you talk about not like the Carolina teams of old you don't see the Worthies, the Perkins, the Jordans, the Kenny Smiths, the Brad Doherty's. They're really super, super athletes. Hill to the baseline. Hurley fakes the three. And he is fouled by Lynch, a reach in. That will be two on George Lynch. Brian Reese already on the bench with three. Lynch has really got to step it up offensively. I personally think that Dean Smith has done one of his super jobs of coaching this year. When you think about losing only three games, look at the free throw line here for the Blue Devils. That's amazing. Versus the opponents, only 263 attempts, and they've made over 402. I mean, 402 they have made. That's amazing. And Hurley, the 80% shooter, goes to the line. You know, their three losses are losses you would not think that they would have. They lost to Notre Dame, wire to wire, out at Madison Square Garden. They were beaten at home by Florida State, who played without Douglas Edwards on their own living room floor. And then they lost to Gugliotta. North Carolina State, he put that great show on, and you were there for that. Well, most people would have lost NC State that night. Gugliotta was on fire. It's a one-point game. Back in a moment. Every year since 35. Not many of them better than tonight. Two overtimes. Virginia survives by four points. Highlights at halftime. A couple top ten teams in deep trouble. Back at the Dean Dome in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Number one Duke leading number line. North Carolina 33-32. About three and a half minutes to go. First half. Hope you'll stay with us at halftime. All the upsets that have been springing out tonight. And we'll find out if Oklahoma State can remain unbeaten. Eddie Sutton's done an amazing job with that team. He'd be my coach of the year right at this time with Jimmy Beheim right behind him. I bet Syracuse. Zone Sullivan. defense. Zone defense by Duke playing that 1-2-2 two, two zone. Lynch miss, has missed about five from that range tonight. He's got that great ability to get in the lane and put up the shot, but the scorer has not been able to score except for one bucket. Duke shows the zone just to basically take him out of a little rhythm. Oh, what great ball movement. Lang finally gets it after Hurley and Grant Hill pass it back and forth. Well, ball movement and also in a proper space. Just properly aligned is so essential to their offensive concepts. There's that zone on defense. That looks like a 2-3. Montrose, nice entry pass. He got away and scored. That's where he has to play. Down in deep and utilize his strength, his tremendous strength. He's a low post player. Montrose has four. The lead is cut to one. Phelps really trying to get over the top of the screen and challenging Bob Hurley. Boy, when Carolina goes to trap Hurley, you can just forget it. He dribbles out of it, passes through it. See, this is tough right now. Leitner with a runner. That is tough right now for Montrose to play Christian Leitner out in the open court. A lot of people thought a walk-in violation. And that's what they call. They'll yeah. overrule the basket. Well, here he is one-on-one -on -one with him. Now, let's see if he... Oh, yeah, there it is. There it is. He lifted the pivot foot. He took the extra step. In the NBA next year, Christian, you can get away with that. You can take one more step in the NBA. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. I'd go with Leitner right now, O'Neal and Houston as my All-American front court, back court, Jackson and Bob Hurley. He just saw Henrik Rodel, who was back in for Dean Smith. Carolina down by one, 2.07 to go in the half. See, the zone starts out. It looks like a 2-3 and then changes with the movement of the basketball. Montrose, the last guy you want throwing a lob pass intended for Salvadorian. It's picked off. He draws three people. He's an excellent passer. Hurley, nice catch. Takes the three. Thomas Hill with a rebound. Knocked down. Got it to Hurley. And Brian Davis knocks it down. Duke up by three. Did you see how quickly Bob Hurley, in getting the basketball, anticipated where his teammate was and made that pass? He's one step ahead of the play at all times. Brian Davis has seven. There's that zone defense. Two, three zone. Trying to match up out of it. A little unusual here. Duke zoning. Hubert Davis gets it to Phelps. Sullivan. Oh, you got to hit the little jumper. Sullivan penetrates and gets the finger roll. He had the little jumper wide open, but he decides to take it right to the goal. That was Rodel, wasn't Rodel. it? Rodel. Turned it over. 
one minute to go in the half. North Carolina really has played tougher on a defensive end than what I've been anticipated. Played far better tonight than when we saw them against North Carolina State in Raleigh. Well, it's important now against the zone to try to overload and get into the gaps, to get into the seams. See, right now they're saying they don't have many people out there who can shoot the perimeter shot. Oh, Salvadori, angle. but kept alive. Montross, that basket won't count, but he's fouled. Montross has been tough in the middle. He has to work on a little bit more agility, jump roll, work on a quicker jump move to the basket, and use that strength to hit. See, right there, that's a poor shot behind the goal. Now, here comes Montross. Now, take it up strong. Come on, Eric, go up strong. Mike Bray behind Mike Krzyzewski was an outstanding staff with Tommy Amica. Peter Gaudet, who does a tremendous job of scouting, former head coach at West Point. Many people thought that this was the greatest class ever assembled until the Michigan group. The class that featured Phelps and Montrose, Sullivan, and also Cliff Rozier. He is the guy that's missing from this puzzle. Mm -hmm. He's that six, nine and a half athlete that they don't have who can really help them as we look at Clark and Cherokee Park sitting on the sideline. Montrose now has six. And Carolina's regained the lead at 38-37. Rozier is over at Louisville. They anticipate him to have a great year next year. That's Sullivan back in the ballgame and full court pressure by Carolina on Hurley. There's a double up now on Bob Hurley with the big guy. Somebody's got to post to the middle of the floor. Dangerous pass, but they got it to Davis. Well, you got to reduce the distance of that pass by stepping to the ball, something Davis did not do. Block is down to 20 seconds. See, Leitner, here's his versatility when you can have a big guy with his passing ability to come up high. Then he'll slide inside. Hurley will look at the clock and start the offense. He's trying to dribble, penetrate, draw somebody in dish. And there it is. Got by Phelps. There Thomas it is. Hill. Thank you, Mr. Hurley. Bob Hurley created that opportunity for Hill. What a beautiful job of executing the offense and Duke with the basket with two seconds to go. We'll go into the locker room with a one-point lead, 39 to 38. It's been just as advertised. Fantastic. Don't leave, people. Hey, Chris, tell them not to leave, Chrissy. One-point game. Let's join Chris Fowler and Jim Valvano. We're not going anywhere, Dick. Just, just relax. So Duke, one unbeaten up by a point. The other unbeaten coming in tonight, Oklahoma State in deep trouble. We'll tell you about that as well as highlights from what is turning into a wild night in college hoops. Jim Valvano joins me after this. Don't go away. ESPN's NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Subaru. It's what to drive. And by Right Guard Sports Stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. And welcome back. Duke by one over Carolina on the road at halftime. Meanwhile, we told you about the other unbeaten in college basketball, Oklahoma State. They came in 20-0, visiting Lincoln, Nebraska. They had beaten the Huskers four straight times in the series, all by double figures. So some payback due. Jamar Johnson nails the three. 11-point run by Nebraska. Then Sean Sutton finds the big guy, Byron Houston. Alley-oop. Huskers by two at half. Then Eric Pitkowski finds Chriswell on the backdoor cut. Eddie Sutton. Watches the undefeated season slipping away. His son, uh, Sean Sutton, gambles, doesn't get it. Chriswell buries the three. Then in the closing minutes, Michael Hughes for the Huskers. Dishes off to big Derek Chandler. Does the chin up on the rim. He will do some woofing after that. The Huskers, one of the bigger wins for their programs in recent years. 11-point lead right now. They're trying to hang on against Oklahoma State as one of the unbeatens is in deep, deep trouble. Also in the Big 8. Iowa State and Missouri. Iowa State gave them a tough game for a while, but the Tigers pull away for a 10-point uh, victory at home in that one. In the ACC, though, number 23, Florida State, clocked by Maryland, 93-85. Walt Williams had 38 points, an incredible seven straight games over, 30-plus points for Williams as they win their second game in the conference. Another surprise here, Clemson, in overtime, beats Georgia Tech by 17 points, 95-78 as Bovane tosses in 22 for the Tigers. And Virginia, another ACC team favored over Virginia Tech on a neutral floor, needs two overtimes to subdue the Hokies, 61-57. Now, Jim, this is normally the time when we go to the Telestrator, but 
Not much to tell us right in the first half like this. You have me all prepared for the X and O, and it's just frenetic pace. <laughs> I have <laughs> myself gone against uh, uh, Dean Smith and Mike Krzyzewski close to, well, over 50 times, and I've watched them go against each other. It's always such a technical uh, mm -hmm. approach to the game. Well, today it was two neighborhood rivals saying, let's get it on, because look at this action right here. I mean, all kinds of things are happening. First, we have the drive here. Look at this. Boom. Look at that block. Then off balance shot by David. Guys and drop it on the deck. Bad pass off his shoulder. You don't see this kind of play. Drive again. All right, well, let's settle down a little bit. No, no, no. Let's throw the ball across court. Drive again, Davis. Go. Bam. We're going to deck again. And it goes down. Chris, I have never seen a half of basketball like that between these two uh, teams. It's been really incredible. It's just up and down, and the action is unbelievable. Maybe the second half, they'll slow down. But it also, another thing, tonight was not the night to go against home teams, it appears, because everybody at home is upsetting uh, people tonight. Well, we've talked about Oklahoma State. There's another top 10 team in a little bit of trouble on the road. We'll tell you about that when we come back. In the meantime, check more scores as we go to break on Wild. Here we Wind. have a nice impasse, interior pass, a drive. Look at the foot. I mean, that foot is a <laughs> foot out of bounds. The referee will always let you know that. He points down, and then he goes, we're going this way, right? Well, it happens all the time, right? Now we're going to see another another situation in your pass. This is a Chris Berman. He'll like this one. Back, 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 back. The guy goes, and he steps. Well, how come? Why is he going? To... Ref says, I can't believe it. But you guys are out of bounds again. Got to go this way. All right, now here's another guy going to get in position for a drive. He's supposed to fake to the basket. No, he fakes to the bench. <laughs> Referee says, I got to tell you, we're going the other way. And it's amazing how many times you will see that, Chris. And, of course, we'll get... why can't they stay on the court? Well, you don't want guys who are going around. ESPN's NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Audi, who invites you to test drive the all-new Audi 100 V6 and take control by today's Duracell, the Copper Tough battery, and by ESPN Home Video, producers and distributors of Dick Vitale's College Hoop Superstars, available at video and retail stores nationwide. They are mobbing the floor in Lincoln. Nebraska has beaten Oklahoma State 85-69, so Jim, one of the unbeatens has fallen, I guess, grudgingly. Yeah. We have to congratulate somebody. Dick, when you're hot, you're <laughs> hot. You picked it, you got it. What about this one, Dick? Is Duke going down too? <laughs> yeah, Dick. What about this one? Well, I'm staying. You with finally the one. got one right. Well, when you're a partner of mine and you do that to me, I mean, I'm not taking you out for dinner anymore. Come on, Patrick, cover that mouth. You never have. Oh God, I can't believe it. I'll tell you the truth. What a great game though this first half was. And you know what's amazing? You got a situation where Duke's up one with a great play by Hurley at the end of the half. George Lynch has not been a factor. He's one That's for right. seven. But neither is Christian Leitner. Leitner very off in the first half, only four points. And tonight, not a good night to be a top 25 team. Here are the first half stats. Field goal percentage, Duke has that advantage. But Carolina with nine to five from the free throw line. Bench scoring, a big advantage for North Carolina, 15 to two. I think really what's big here as we look at the matchup here with Hurley and Phelps, a key there, no stats shown, is Phelps has only had one turnover. Bobby has put in some big threes and made the great penetration at the end. But a key statistic on that chart was the fact that Duke did not go to the free throw line right. a great deal. They like to go to the line about 30 times a game. And as you saw there on the chart, they did not get that opportunity. It was four for six in the first half on the free throw line. Dick, I'll give you this one. Picking Nebraska to beat undefeated and second-ranked Oklahoma State is a heck of an upset pick you got it I don't think it really is Mike I really don't I, I think when you look at Nebraska and what they've done at home they're a good basketball team and I've often said that I think Eddie Sutton is getting maximum out of his people they got a tough date now with Kansas coming up Duke trying not to be an upset victim. They lead by one as we start the second half they're switching out on Leitner right now notice how they're switching defensively and there's a reach in foul on Derek Phelps what we simply mean by the switch, you're assigned the designated guy to guard, but on an interchange, they begin, they switch, they change men. In that case, Phelps ended up on Leitner and fouled him. That's two on Phelps. Brian Reese is in there. He picked up three fouls in the first three minutes of the game and sent out the rest. He's number 31 for Carolina. Montrose playing against Leitner. Hurley beating the pressure. Gets it to Brian Davis. Wide open, missed. Lynch, good rebound. 
He's a strong rebounder, George Lynch, one of the better rebounders in the ACC. Ball reversal. So important to the North Carolina offense. Swinging the ball side to side. Great Montrose, pass. great pass to Phelps. Good look from the back side. Great move by Phelps. He catches Hurley staring at the ball in the post. And Hurley, one of the outstanding defenders in all of college basketball. Trying to return the favor. Starts down the lane. Leitner for three. He's got the range, but missed this one. Lynch gets good positioning to rebound. Carolina by one in possession of the ball, and the crowd wants to come to its feet. Phelps picked up his dribble. to be a little bit of trouble. Instead of pushing out the offense a little high. Lynch, who was very ineffective inside in the first half, just couldn't hit one. He's hot one. pass there. Hubert Davis for three. Montross tried to tip it for the rebound. Goes to Brian Davis. Lady came in at halftime and says, "Tell them we're yelling tonight." And I said, "All right, you're making noise." <laughs> they didn't like that wine and cheese crack that uh, Florida State made. Davis with a miss, contract with Mo contact with Montrose, no foul. Duke went into a double stack, one four set. Reese, nice fake. He has really improved offensively. They can't afford for him to get his fourth foul. He is a much better shooter than when he came to Carolina as a freshman. And the lead is now three. Oh, Here's the steal. Give it up, George. Give the rock up, George. Reese. Got it. That's Brian Reese. Get a T.O., baby. Mikey K. Get a T.O. Mike Krzyzewski has seen enough. 17-41 to go in the game. And the number one team in the nation is down by five. We'll be back to Chapel Hill in a moment. North Carolina has scored all six points in the second half, and Brian Reese has done a big job here. Great move with a head fake, and Reese scores. He has seven points for the six in the second half, and this is only the fourth time this year that Duke has trailed in the second half. Great spin move by Reese to make that happen. Played with Malik Seeley also in Autry over at Tallentine High. They were like number one in the nation. Leitner has been held to four, and now he's just plain held as Montrose bumped him out of bounds. He seems a little passive, almost a little bit where he feels like can turn it on. He doesn't seem to really be an intense guy that you normally see, Christian Leitner. Dean Smith, as you saw, did not care for the call. And here is the biggest deficit of this season, seven points. Carolina has them down by five right now. Hurley for three. Reese fought for the rebound, tipped away by Brian Davis, but last touch by Carolina. Carolina's done an excellent job of neutralizing Christian Leitner. Montross is playing him really physically tough. Tried to get it to him this time, taken back by Davis. Excellent hustle. You got the strength of Montross against the finesse of Leitner. When they're looking for him a lot now, double team Montross, nice defense. Well, he did a great job of feeding them to the basketball, anticipated a great denial. Reese looking for Lynch, can't find him, goes to Davis. Montross against Leitner. Trying to get good spacing, trying to move the ball side to side, break the defense down by ball reversal. Carolina nice playing screen. with a lot of confidence. And now Hubert Davis looked down as the ball went whistling over his head. And it's a turnover. They got to be one of the Dr. Jekyll and Hyde basketball teams. Getting beaten wire to wire by Notre Dame on their home floor by Florida State without Edwards. And then they come out of here and they're really challenging Duke here. They were out rebounded all three times in those losses. There's a double up. Forced the turnover. Bad pass by Thomas Hill. It was the rotation out after the double up by George Lynch, who stepped out. He's a rotator. 44-39 Carolina. 16-18 to go from Chapel Hill. Three Duke turnovers in the second half. Only one from Carolina. Phelps couldn't get the roll. Lynch! That's what they need, the offensive rebounding power of George Lynch. Hey, they're waking up! 
People don't leave. Number one is in a little bit of trouble. It's the biggest lead for North Carolina and matches the biggest deficit that Duke has faced all year long. They are really doubling up on Leitner, almost forming a triangle with three people coming down on Leitner inside. They had three guys on him that time. This is a new club that beat this Duke team from last year. You don't have Rick Fox here, who's now doing an excellent job with the Boston Celtics. Peter Chilcutt is not here. This is a totally different basketball team. King Rice is gone. Foul was on Lynch. It's hits third. And a blind pass. Montross with a great job. Hubert Davis. Oh! Oh! If that goes, the top comes off the building. If that goes, I'm jumping down right from here, baby. I'll tell you. Hubert Davis, a great job of giving it a chance. Protected the ball with his body. And he's fouled by Grant Hill. That's three on Grant Hill. Hubert Davis, when he came out of high school, not heavily recruited, Mike. In fact, when you look at that class, they were rejected by Christian Leitner. They were rejected also by Billy Owens, who they were really pursuing very hard. Adam Key from Stanford said no, and Matt Stagenga from out of Michigan State. It was not a good year in recruiting for Dean Smith. Hubert Davis now has 11, and averaging nearly 20 points a game. He's hit all three tries from the free throw line. But so many times, guys that don't get the great accolades in high school prove they can play in the big-time environment, and he is one of them. Duke has not been down by this margin all year long. You know Duke's going to put a spurt and get really back in his game again. They're just too talented. They have been number one since last year's NCAA tournament. They will not give it up easily. North Carolina really has played tough defensively. Nice ball movement. The foul will be on Lynch, and that will be four on George Lynch. They're trying to get the ball inside to Leitner, almost telegraphing it. They got a tough date after this. They got to go down to Shaquille O'Neal country, down at LSU. Had him the other day against Kentucky. And Shaq Mipposit is now playing in another world. George Lynch only has four points tonight. He leaves with his fourth foul. Brian Reese was in trouble in the first half, but Lynch strong on the boards had six rebounds so far tonight you know mike when you think of the great programs in college basketball christian wears a jersey certainly of one of them i like to rate great programs on number one their ability to win number two their ability to graduate players and three stay free from ncaa controversy you think of duke you think <laughs> of north carolina you think of indiana certainly arizona now and georgetown really fits the the mold of those kind of programs all those parameters fit Lead cut to seven, 15, 18 to go in the ballgame. Derek Phelps, Salvadori number 33, is in there along with Montrose. Good feed, and Leitner just let him go. That's what he has to do. Be a little bit more aggressive offensively. Eric Montrose is playing as well tonight as I've seen him in a North Carolina uniform. Exactly. 50 to 41. Leitner comes outside so he can get the ball. Tries to drive. Whistle away from the ball and a foul. It will be against Carolina. It looked like Hubert Davis. Away from the basketball. Pat Sullivan's doing an excellent job on Grand Hill. Look at Montrose. He holds up Leitner. He says, you're an All-American, Leitner, but look at my hands. And then Leitner says, I'm getting out of his way. I'm giving him that jam, baby. Foul on Hubert Davis was his first. 15 foul against Carolina in the second half. Duke has committed only one. Grant Hill lost it on the way up, missed Leitner offensive rebound. We certainly haven't seen many of those, and the block gives the ball back to Carolina. Grant Hill's going to have to step it up a notch. They need some help out there, Duke. Sullivan kicks it back to Phelps. Montross hustles after the rebound. Great job. In today's day and game, you have to be able to shoot the basketball. You become a liability. Bobby Knight addressed that yesterday at his press conference about the fact that we have to make some changes because people are not playing Chris Reynolds or Meeks. And right now, they're not guarding Phelps on a perimeter. He has to be able to make that jump shot. Carolina bench really upset by the call, which will give the ball to Duke. And Montross uh, bleeding again. Seems like he's been a fighter. Been yeah. A fight, a heavyweight championship battle. I tell you what, this time he got poked in the eye. The last time he got hit in the side of the head. 
They need him back on his floor. He's Boy, he's played an exceptional game. Especially defensively. He has really done an excellent job neutralizing Mr. Leitner. Again, going back to the top of the show, we talked about three factors. Handle the pressure of Duke. They have done that. Number two, get some scoring out of Davis. They have done that. Number three, neutralize Leitner. They have done that. Second half field goals. Carolina has hit five of eight. Duke is 0 for 6. And my check this number out, it blows my mind. North Carolina, 21 consecutive 20 game win seasons. Is that consistency, Dean Smith? That's why he's a Hall of Famer. Unbelievable. He's been to 21 NCAAs. Grant Hill. They got to get him involved offensively a little bit more. He's just too talented. Let him begin to drive as he did right there. Oh, Dean, watch out of Technico. You know how to coach his box. What's going on? He's out of the coach's box. And I don't know why he was up in such a hurry, but Dean was as upset as you will see him. And he's hit with the T. Well, it'd have to be at hit a with very a inopportune time. Well, write it down right now. There's Hill with the jumper. We had a situation last night, though it was not really a factor in winning the game. It changed some of the momentum of Illinois, who jumped out 13-4. And there was a T on Lou Henson out of the box. Keep this down and write the score down, Mike. It's 50-43 with 14-11. Well, first of all, Carolina loses possession. Now Duke has a pair of free throws. They've got Hurley at the line. Leitner flips the ball. Oh, that's why they're upset. Leitner's interfering with the basketball coming through the net. Here's Lenny Wirtz, a veteran. You talk about a guy that's been through the wars. Here he is on a big game. The quality of officiating in the ACC, I believe, is a step better from top to bottom than most conferences. The reason Fred Barakat. And Dick, even though they were rated a couple of years ago and lost several of their top officials to NBA jobs, they have done a great job of getting younger officials and training them to go along with guys like Lenny Works. Well, a lot of big-time guys want to work in this environment. It's such a great basketball environment. Look at the poise of Mike Krzyzewski. I mean, here he is. He's got an unbeaten team, 23 games in a row. I'd be going bananas on his sideline, going wacky. This guy has so much poise, and a lot of that's got to be attributed to his background, his military background. Hurley has hit three out of four from the free throw line. This could be a huge turnaround here. Remember, we wrote it down. 50, 43, 14, 11 on the clock. Hurley misses the first. North Carolina with their new threads. And Hurley misses them both. That's so unusual in a crucial situation. This is Dean Smith after that play. Tell me this guy's not a competitor. You don't win all those years without being a fierce competitor. Hurley, great feed to Brian Davis for the layup. So that technical actually results in only two points. Although Carolina lost possession of the ball. Duke rotates out of the man-to-man -to, -man to the zone. Someone's going to have to step up and shoot the basketball from the wings against the zone. See, the wings are going to be wide open. 50 to 45. Sullivan posting up down low. He and Salvadori are in there. Got to attack the seam. You can't pick up your dribble. That's a bad play by Phelps. Well, Phelps just got caught, picked up the dribble, had to do something with it, and threw it away. They score here. I'd get a T.O. Thomas Hill for three. I'd get a T.O. Uncle Dean. I'd get a T.O. Uncle Dean. 50 to 48. The lead cut back to two. Down the lane. What a beautiful drive. By Brian Reese. Brian Reese is starting to believe he's something special. He wants the basketball. He has nine points. Grant Hill back the other way. Leitner kept it alive. Leitner blocked by Salvadori, who did it flat footed. Salvadori coming into this game leads them in block shots. 43. Here's a guy coming out of high school at the famed Garfinkel basketball camp. Five star. He couldn't even be a factor among all the college prospects. And here he is playing major college basketball and making a positive contribution. 13 minutes to go. North Carolina 52, Duke 48. Sitting in a 2-3 zone. I haven't seen Duke play that zone that long a period of time all year. They've used it now on four different occasions here tonight. Look at the gap at the foul line if you flash somebody right behind Hurley. 
They loop it down to Sullivan underneath, and he'll make the shot, but it will be overruled. The foul is going to go against Carolina. It looks like Salvadori. Right now, Duke looks like momentum has swung their way. See, the foul line area is open. Oh, there's the foul on the back screen. He lays a back screen on Cherokee Park, Salvadori, and definitely a foul. He moved him out pretty good, didn't he? Yeah. And hey, that will put him in the bonus situation, and Duke will be able to go to the free throw line because it was not a player control foul. He Christian. fouled without the ball. Christian Leitner, very relaxed. They have so much confidence, this team. You know, I'm looking at the banners up here flying high.